안녕하세요. Greetings. I am Dr. Kang Chung-gyu of K Dental Clinic. When you place implant in the upper posterior, inevitably you come across the sinus. This is because of pneumatization in the sinus along with bone resorption. After extraction, for successful upper posterior implant placement, you need to treat the sinus appropriately. Furthermore, you need to understand bone graft within the sinus. I'm going to talk about sinus surgery. In other words, I'm going to talk about crestal approach and lateral approach in detail. Today's contents. I'm going to talk about anatomical structure of maxillary sinus as well as the surrounding structure and then move on to sinus surgery. I'm going to talk about different types of sinus surgery and complete the lecture. Regarding sinus surgery, there is a very important message in this image. This is what I first took when the patient came in. The patient received implant from a different dental clinic. In the upper, there is bone resorption overall. And obviously, one way or the other, implants were placed in the upper. So implants not supported by denture, only for those the prosthesis was delivered in the lower posterior. Because there is inferior alveolar nerve, it was difficult to place the implant. So in the anterior, two implants were placed and over denture was done. This is another case. This is a case done by myself in the upper. The remaining bone is barely one millimeter. In this case, using sinus surgery, I was able to do bone graft and place a implant with appropriate length without a problem. In other words, as shown in the two slides, for people who place implant a lot, sinus is an area of blessing. No matter how severe bone resorption has occurred, even if there is very little bone, you can make bone easily in the sinus. However, if you treat the sinus carelessly or if there is inflammation, you would not be able to make bone and you have to invest a lot of time and energy in rebuilding it. What we need to do to make this area an area of blessing, we need to understand the sinus surgery and approach it very cautiously. The maxillary sinus shape. It is the biggest of the sinus and the average volume is 15 cc. It exists on left and right and size and shape may vary depending on individual. Let's look at the maxillary sinus wall. The most important wall is the lateral wall. When you do lateral approach, it's very important. And inferior wall, which is utilized when we do socket lift. As mentioned, lateral wall, we create window when we do lateral approach and the thickness is approximately 1 to 2 millimeter and sometimes it can become thicker. In inferior wall, inferior wall is the sinus floor and is normally 1 to 1.25 millimeter below the nasal floor. Inferior wall from there, sinus cavity starts and the distance to that equals the amount of the remaining bone. When you do socket lift, you come across this wall. Sinus is covered by a sinus membrane and it's an important structure when we do sinus surgery. Sinus membrane is a membrane that covers the internal structure and can be divided into 
epithelium lamina propria and periosteum. And sinus membrane is Schneiderian membrane. Another important thing is structure that connects the sinus and nasal cavity. It's called maxillary osteum. It is positioned superior medial to the sinus. As mentioned, it connects nasal cavity and the sinus. If the patency is not maintained and is blocked, normal drainage becomes impossible and can lead to sinusitis. Anatomical abnormality within sinus, rhinitis, and lesion within sinus these situations can occur, and if you have to do bone graft, you need to check patency of maxillary osteum. Let's look at history of sinus surgery. Originally, it was not for implant, but it was to treat sinusitis or other reasons, and for sinus surgery, lateral approach was done. In 1883, Caldwell, and in 1887, Henry Luke did such surgeries, and since then, we have come to call it Caldwell-Luke surgery. Let's look at sinus surgery for placing implants. In 1980, Dr. Boyne used lateral window osteotome technique. This was referred to as trapdoor osteotomy, and lateral approach was used. In 1994, Summers developed osteotome technique. In other words, a socket lift crestal approach was developed. Sinus surgery means lifting the sinus membrane and augmenting the alveolar bone. The bone that is achieved will support the implant. That is the sinus surgery. Let's compare the techniques. It can be divided into crystal approach and lateral approach. Let's look at the terms. The crystal approach refers to socket lift or sinus lift, and the lateral approach sinus surgery refers to sinus graft. In other words, depending on where you approach it, you can call it crystal approach or lateral approach. Crestal approach, you approach the sinus crestally. In other words, from the crest, you approach it and lift the membrane. That is the crestal approach. Lateral approach, it's approaching it via lateral wall, and the membrane is lifted and bone graft is done. That is the lateral approach in sinus surgery. Before we do sinus surgery, we need to manage these. First, you need to tell the patient to quit smoking. Bain and others in 1996 recommended abstaining from smoke one or two weeks before surgery and six to eight weeks after surgery. If you do graft in sinus surgery, in another literature, there was a meaningful difference between smokers and non-smokers. Also, before sinus surgery, CT needs to be taken to evaluate the state of sinus. You need to check whether there is sinusitis or rhinitis or other inflammation. Take CT for that. Let's look at a case. The patient came in for implant placement in the upper right quadrant. You can see that there's not a lot of bone, so I thought bone graft was necessary and took CT. The sinus wall, the entire sinus wall looked radio-opaque. Sinus surgery along with bone graft can lead to failure in this state. I sent the patient to ENT to treat sinus first before implant placement. This is a different case. 54 years old male patient. In the upper right quadrant, implants were to be placed and I took CT once again. 
Over half of the sinus wall looked radio opaque and it didn't look good. Rather than doing implant surgery here, you need to send the patient to ENT to reduce the size of lesion or do appropriate treatment and then proceed with surgery. So I referred the patient to ENT. After ENT treatment was complete, two months later, radio peak area, it has disappeared a lot. And after it was confirmed to be normal, I used lateral approach and did immediate implant placement. After two weeks, you can see that the area where it's radio opaque, it has increased, but with time it has stabilized. And three months after implant placement, prosthesis was completed and implant was placed without any issue and there was no issue with mastication. Let's look at types of sinus surgery. In upper posterior area, the surgery method is determined depending on the amount of bone left. If there's sufficient bone, you can place the implant accordingly. If there's lack of bone, you have two choices. First, you can place a short implant accordingly, or if that's not possible, you can do sinus surgery, do bone graft, and place the implant. In upper posterior, we need to understand the level of bone resorption. That's most important. Let's look at a case. In number 15 and 16, there were lack of bone for implant placement. The patient did not want sinus surgery, so I placed a short implant in number 16. I chose a large diameter implant, a 6 by 7 millimeter implant, and the patient had no issue with it. After four years at the checkup, it looks okay and stable. Let's look at surgery method by sinus approach. In general, depending on the amount of residual bone, you choose whether you're going to do crystal or lateral approach. In general, if the height of remaining bone, residual bone, is over 4 to 5 millimeter, you choose crystal approach, and if it falls below, you do lateral approach. But clinically, more so than the amount of residual bone, depending on the surgeon's ability, the approach is chosen. Let's look at crystal approach first. If the residual bone is over 4 to 5 millimeter, and if bone graft is not that much required, and where the sinus wall, where window is to be formed, there's osseous artery. The advantages are that it's simple and the surgical site is not extensive, so the patient can recover very quickly. The disadvantage, you cannot see the sinus directly, so it's a blind technique, and you will not be able to see if there's perforation or the amount of bone graft. Let's look at lateral approach. Lateral approach is used when the residual bone is less than 4 to 5 millimeter and if there is requirement for a lot of bone graft. This can be done also to treat the perforation of Schneiderian membrane during lateral approach. Advantages include you can see directly the state of sinus and do bone graft. Also, you can check the perforation and see the amount and position of bone graft. The disadvantages include uh, that it's complicated and surgical site is extensive, so the patient discomfort can be experienced and there could be swelling or pain. Let's look at the instruments used for crystal approach. Osteotone kit 
or cus kit can be used. In lateral approach, you can use burr or plus sinus kit or last kit. Let's look at crestal approach. There's the traditional osteotome technique, and there's also a technique using cus kit. As you can see, using osteotome, sinus is lifted, and bone graft is done, and implant is placed. As you can see, it's a crystal approach, surgery in which melting is performed on the site of the fixture to fracture the maxillary sinus floor and lift the maxillary sinus membrane, and it is very useful when the bone density is soft. As mentioned, Without bone graft, osteotome technique, if you do that, the residual bone height should be 6 to 8 millimeter, and you would lift the Schneiderian membrane by 1 or 2 millimeter. You do not do bone graft, and there is less possibility of inflammation, and it is easy to adjust the implant placement depths. In other words, the sinus Floor is cortical bone, so you fracture it and lift it and adjust the placement depths. This is the technique for that. As you can see, osteotome technique was used and you can fracture the sinus floor. As you can see, perform initial drilling down to the depths where there remains 1 to 2 mm bone in the maxillary sinus floor and enlarge the drilling hole to the final diameter through a larger osteotome diameter. Upon creation of the final stage drilling hole, fracture and elevate the maxillary sinus floor and using the final diameter osteotome and then place the fixture. Without bone graft, sinus lift is done this way. Without bone graft, using osteotome, sinus lift was done in this case. 55 years old male patient, and if you look at the CT, the residual bone is approximately seven millimeters. Sinus floor was lifted by one to two millimeter, and I plan to place the implant that was 8.5 millimeter. The direction was checked, osteotome was used, sinus was lifted, and 5 by 8.5 millimeter implant was placed. The initial stability was good, so prosthesis was delivered. Sinus lift crystal approach. You can use cos kit for this. The membrane without perforation, you can lift it using this kit. That is Crystal Approach Sinus Kit, CUS Kit for short. The features, it prevents membrane perforation and use, you can use drill for drilling. Schneiderian membrane is lifted safely. And hydraulic membrane lift is used to lift the membrane. Without secondary infection, quickly using bone carrier, bits shaped like funnel, and you can do bone graft easily. Cast kit, there, it consists of three stages, drilling, hydraulic lift, bone graft, and implant is placed. The most important instrument in casket, hydraulic membrane lifter. Instrument that lifts the sinus membrane with hydraulic pressure. The recommendation is to use 3 cc syringe and inject the saline slowly into the sinus. You gradually increase the injection amount from 0.5 to 1.0 to 1.5 cc. It can be used for all drill holes. As you can see, lift is fixed and 0.5, you put it in and remove it and finally you put in 1.5 cc and you draw back and you by doing this you do hydro lift. It's not too strong or too gentle and you lift using the hydraulic pressure. This is a case where sinus lift was done using cus kit.
52 years old female patient, and the 26th implant was to be placed. So if you take a CT, it's 5.8 millimeter. Sinus graft was unnecessary at this point, so I chose a crystal approach using CAS kit. As you can see, drilling was done. Finally, hydro lifter is fixed, saline is injected and drawn back, and if there's bleeding, it means that perforation has not occurred and that lift has been done successfully. Bone graft was done, and then implant was placed. If you look at the x-ray, 5 by 8.5 millimeter implant was placed. The lift was not sufficient, however, but it's still okay, and a bone graft was done and implant was placed, and the prosthesis was delivered without any issue. Next, I'm going to talk about lateral approach, in other words, sinus graft. As mentioned before, you use burr, or you can use last kit to create window. First, the traditional method using burr. The handpiece used, you need to use low speed straight handpiece. In the case of high speed handpiece, it may be difficult to control and perform the procedure while feeling the sensation on the hand with low speed handpiece for a septic surgery. If the window is too thick at times, you need to use high speed first. If you just use low speed, it may take too much time. The burr used. First, you use carbide burr which has good cutting power. If you get close to the window, change to diamond burr. And if you get close to the sinus membrane in order to prevent a perforation, at the final stage, use diamond burr. That is the recommendation. The size of the window. If you make it big, it is easier to do bone graft, but it, you can cause a lot of trauma. And if you make it too small, trauma is reduced. But uh, if you do sinus graft, it may be difficult to use your instruments. In terms of trauma, you shouldn't make a window too big, but in order to do membrane lift using a freer elevator, at least the diameter needs to be over 5 mm. Designing the window. For inferior margin, it needs to be 2 to 3 mm away from the sinus floor, and for superior margin, you need to secure 5 mm, so approximately 5 mm from inferior margin, you need to do that. For anterior margin, it needs to be 2 to 3 mm away from interior wall, and posterior wall, you need to decide depending on the placement of posterior implant. For posterior margin, it doesn't need to be long because you get good elevation, therefore it shouldn't be very big. With the thickness of the window, you can see it through CT. The lateral wall, it can be thick or thin, so you need to take a CT to assess how much window you need to form. Removing the window first, in the past, you would fracture and you'd put it in, and you'd use hinge osteotomy technique, but we don't use it these days. Or people would use a grinding technique. It takes a long time, and it's difficult to fill it. So normally, we don't use it. This is the frequently used technique as repositioning technique. When you form a window, you lift the membrane, and the instrument that you use for this is a freer elevator. The order of lift, first of all, you do it from the easiest place. It's the floor. You do floor, and then do the distal, mesial, and then the upper area, which is the hardest. 
Member in elevation. The most important thing is the instrument needs to be in contact with a bony wall. Fish cannot live without water and flap elevator. You need to always have contact with bony wall and or else you might cause perforation on the membrane. Always, the freer elevator should be in contact with the bone and then you should lift the membrane. When you do the lift, you need to do it sufficiently or else with time, pneumatization can occur and the area, it can collapse. So when you do membrane lift, you need to do it sufficiently. As shown, sufficient lift was not done in number 27. With time, pneumatization occurred and you can see it collapsing. In order to prevent this, when you lift the membrane on all directions, sufficient lift should be done and then bone graft should be done. Implant immediate placement was done and sinus graft. If you look at the order of placing the implant immediately and doing sinus graft, you open the window, lift the membrane, and then do bone drilling. Bone graft is done and implant is placed. This is the process. The important thing is this. You need to do minimum drilling. In other words, the area for sinus graft the bone is soft and there is little residual bone. So the final drill, sh you should do under drilling by one or two sizes because it's a soft bone in order to get good initial stability. Let's look at a clinical case and follow the order. In the upper right quadrant, there was very little residual bone, one or two millimeter and graft was done and I plan to do a graft as well as immediate implant placement. First window was designed, the drilling was done, window was removed and membrane from the floor where it's easy we lift from there and the window for instrument to approach it easily the diameter should be over five millimeter. Implant drilling is done, bone graft is done. After we place the implant, we reposition the window. After that, healing abutment is connected and surgery is complete. After three to four months, prosthesis was delivered. This is pre-op image and implant was done after sinus graft. And prosthesis was delivered on all directions, lift was done well, and it has regenerated into a bone. When you do lateral approach, you can use last kit to form a window. There's two ways to do it. First, you can use dome or wide dome drill and grind it thoroughly, or you can use core drill for repositioning. You can remove it and then put it on once again. After surgery, there are precautions. Gauze bite should be done and pressure dressing is necessary. What is important is that after sinus graft, for one month, you should tell the patient not to blow their noses too hard and this is to prevent the bone graft from collapsing due to severe pressure. And for successful surgery, you should recommend your patient from abstaining from smoke for eight weeks. If in order to prevent excessive swelling, have the patient use cold back for two to three days. To prevent inflammation, provide medication for seven days. And also chlorohexidine gargle helps. As shown in the image, after surgery, there can be bruising and there can be a lot of swelling. You need to tell this to your patient early or else it'll just come as an excuse. After sinus graft, you need to tell the patient that there can be bruising and swelling. And this is essential.
성공적인 For successful sinus surgery, you need to have solid diagnosis and have a proper treatment plan. You need to have advanced surgical skills and adequate management is required. Also, you need to have good relation with your patient. I've talked about sinus surgery. How was it? Through Master Course Basic, as you build the basics of implant surgery, and if you refer to other clinical cases and advance your technique, I'm sure you'll be able to master the art of implant placement. I am certain you'll be able to excel above the others. Thank you for watching.